Hi there, I'm Trevor Coote, and this is Business is Fucking Hard, the podcast where business owners pull back the curtain and talk about the realities of owning a business. We'll hear their stories, learn some lessons, and have some fun along the way. Thanks for joining us. On today's episode, we are joined by Sherrod Kare. Sherrod is an award-winning storyteller and filmmaker and is the founder of Human Biography. His collaborations have included some of the world's most influential people. Building a brand and running a business are hard, but when they include telling the stories of people's most intimate and vulnerable experiences, it can be even harder. I hope you enjoy this episode. Sherrod Kare, welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate that, Trev. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we were just talking uh, before we got started here about the introduction by a, a mutual colleague, uh, Trevor Hargreaves. He, you went to you went to university with him uh, for your master's program uh, at the same university that I did my MBA at uh, Royal Roads University. And um, one of my previous guests was the uh, dean of the the School of Management there. So um, lots of connections uh, already to the podcast and uh, and uh, kind of between our worlds, which which we were also talking about as well. Kind of that value of connections and, and, uh, kind of keeping that going. Um, Sherrod, I want to, I want to get started with, uh, the question that I, I, I always start with, uh, and then we'll see where the conversation goes. Um, but what was your introduction to business? When did you kind of uh, find that entrepreneurial path or that, that bug, uh, to, to get started kind yeah. of in, in um, business? It's funny. I, um, so I'm, I work in the media space and um, we make content, video content. And um, before that was a very big thing, um, uh, I used to volunteer on television. And so I used to volunteer on TV, just hosting a community television. And I really loved that. And I loved uh, people telling me what I needed to do and I would go do it and it'd be done. And it was a volunteer thing. So it wasn't really that big of a deal, but on the on the week, on like the weekdays, you know, I'd have a regular gig, a regular job, which was, um, you know, um, a very, it was a great job during the time. It was like 2000, like, you know, early, early to mid two thousands, uh, doing the TV stuff, comfortable with not being paid for that because I just loved doing it. And then having a really great day job. And then around 2007, 2008, um, somebody knew that I used to host TV as a volunteer and they're like, Hey, would you like to host online TV? And I was like, Oh, what is that? You know, like, you know, I thought <laughs> yeah. you know, it's from television or something, but, but what it was is that first initial ideas of what online content was going to be. And right. we, we taped these little segments. It was like called urban mixer. And we would uh, interview people from chefs to bands, to uh, people in the community here in Vancouver. Um, where we were sort of, you know, we resided. And what, what started to happen was uh, a lot of people started to watch it and people started to pay me uh, for, to do that. So I was like, wow, this is cool. And then I was like, I sort of did the math and I said, you know, how much would it cost for me to uh, create content at that time? Just myself. So grabbed a camera, learned how to edit uh, on my on my MacBook, my newest MacBook that I had purchased during that time. And I started to look at the business ideas of this, around this. And not, not really having a, a lot of business acumen, uh, but a lot of creative acumen, I just said, let me just do this for fun continuously and then have that day job. Well, in 2008, uh, the financial crisis hit and I was a senior manager for um, uh, an automobile company. And um, I, well, I got laid off and I was like, okay, this is horrible, but I'll go get another job. That's immediately what was, what was said. And my wife uh, looked at me, she says, do you really want another job or do you want to like pursue this thing that you're doing? Because it seems like it could be something. And, you know, like, wow, God bless her because I then did go double down and I, I went into content, not really knowing that content was going to be a big thing. And so I was kind of one of the earliest adopters in the city for sure to self self-produce content uh, outside of any type of uh, television agency or whatnot. So I started to do that sort of interview people in town and then people start to pay me. and that was kind of my introduction to business. Like I, I remember at the time, because I was laid off work, uh, like you could go through um, Service Canada and take uh, business courses because they're right. like, help everybody out here, right? And so I I jumped on that and through the YMD, uh, YMCA in Vancouver, I took a, a business um, 
uh, like an, a program that allowed you to create a business plan. And we, I did that. And my, my company at the time was called Kare Communications, my last name Communications. And I said, so I'm going to make video content. I'm going to tell people stories through content. And I didn't know what that was going to be. When I then soon uh, got into my master's degree, I really honed in on what I do today, which is a lot of legacy work, a lot of fascinating humans all around the planet. Um, but the business side was always something that I just needed to like sort of have in the back pocket or understand what things were, um, how to bill people, you know, how to, uh, how to invoice people, like, you know, things yeah. just paid. Um, what was, uh, you know, right down to doing the taxes. Like I hate doing taxes, but understanding how, uh, what was needed for that sort of thing. And then finally, like, you know, um, there's etiquette, right? There's how you treat a client. And I think I was really good at that because, uh, I'm a, pe- I'm a people pleaser, you know, I, I grew up like trying to be a helper. And so I think, uh, a really great trait uh, for entrepreneurs, and I don't want to like like lose your you know lose your sanity, but you are there to please others and, and help people in, in a genuine way. And I was already very sure. genuine in that act, so it came very naturally naturally for me to like do great work, and then also have this angst if I was I was like I don't want to let people down, right? And that yeah. was another great thing that I learned is like don't let people down in any category, whether it's work or not. But it really helped in the workplace. It really helped. Yeah. Me. That's that's so some of the, like that's how my early early sort of ideas of what business is. Now it's transformed. I've I've documented some fascinating business people in the world. Yeah. Like, like some and of we're gonna yeah. we're we're gonna get into that. I, I want to unpack uh, you know some of uh, obviously what you're doing and, yes. and kind of that that process and that kind of thing, but but also some of the potential other lessons that you've Absolutely. been seeing and and Absolutely. through through stories and, and people sharing stories with you because that that's really what this podcast is all about just just the stories and the lessons that can be learned from them. But Absolutely. I want to go back to a couple of pieces. One is that transition that yeah. that yeah. I mean. It was definitely a forced environment for you. You got laid off, uh, you know, one of two paths. You you go and look for another job or as your 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 wife <laughs> suggested, you you kind of go down this this other path of of uh, you know, what what would this or could this could this look like? Sure. Sure. Um so I want to know kind of about the discomfort around that, the yeah. the a little bit of the anxiety if there was any uh, yeah. kind of the the self doubt and those types of things yeah. because I think anybody that might listen to this that's contemplating starting a business, those are the things that they're going to have to navigate sure. and kind of understand Absolutely. how to how to deal with. Yeah. Um, but the other piece that I really want to after that, uh, what I want to touch on is that creativity component sure. because that's come up in the past with other uh, and 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 especially with kind of what you were offering there is more of that creative component than the business that was driving you into it and Absolutely. so Absolutely. so let's talk about kind of first you know that that kind of emotional piece of of transition and then and then more of the creativity versus business yeah i mean when you like when i was thinking about getting into business I just thought it was the most unrealistic thing for me um, because I had no examples around me or in my family, at least, because that's sort of how I looked. Right. First. My father uh, had a steady career in the telecom uh, industry, like as an engineer from, you know, till his retirement, right. Beginning to end. And, yeah. and we assume or he assumed, and then we then assumed that that was going to be for us as well. And, you know, I think they really were like, when I told them, you know, I'm going to make video content. They're like, what? <laughs> no, right. It was, it was, it was like kind of like out of their realm, you know, they, yeah, they sure. immigrants to this country and they, they only saw things a certain way. So, um, which gave me a lot of anxiety because I was like, Oh, I'm not listening to anybody now. Right. I'm not listening to anybody that I would normally listen to, to go do this audacious thing, which is go and work for myself. Yeah. Because essentially, um, it's it's like a fine line, right? You have to you have to understand that you are there to make all the decisions, good or bad. You're there yeah. to make all the money, all or nothing, and um, and your your livelihood or your life <laughs> depends on it. And there's moments when we all sit with ourselves alone, and you know yourself, and you know the really great stuff you've attained, and then you know all the goofy stuff that you've done in your life. Yeah. Okay. And if you if you sort of put those together, you're like, oh my god, am I really capable of doing or continuing this good stuff, knowing that I could have like not done anything, fallen yeah. short. And yeah. that fear, that fear is horrible. That fear is really real. And uh, 
So you have to have people that believe in you more than you believe in yourself at times, right? So good, good mentors really helped me a lot. Those mentors then turned into um, my, you know, my first clients. Yeah, they became uh, my confidants. Uh, so good mentors really helped me a lot. Uh, thank goodness. But that anxiety remains at times because, at least as a creative person, you're constantly creating from your brain. And again, you go, I'm a, I've, I've had this really great track record, but some days I'm like, kind of like, I don't want to do anything or I don't, I don't, I don't have the motivation or something like that. Or I don't, somebody's not knocking on my door. I got to go knock on somebody else's door. So like you, you have to like, you got to keep going. And you know, whether you're sick, whether you like the, if the nothing's going to happen unless you do it. Right. And that's something that I had to really understand for myself early on. And I had to trust myself. I had to trust myself. I had to like believe in myself to be able to fulfill um, especially to get to the level that I've gotten to now, because like, if you, if you ask me like how I got here, like, I definitely know that like the crazy path that has gotten here. <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, wow. Yeah. I can't, yeah. Believe, I can't believe it. So, so there's a little bit of also, um, uh, believing in magic, you know, believing in manifestation, having a higher belief in something else that's guiding you and being there for you. Uh, whether that is spiritual, religious, or just like, you know, you're like believing that there's something else that's controlling all this or living in a yeah. situation or there's aliens around, whatever it is. <laughs> um, I've been very fortunate. And I, and then that, that fortune, um, fortunate ideal has come from a lot of hard work, a lot of help um, and a lot of on the fly decision making. Right. I had to just go through it. Yeah. I, I think, I think that it, it allows you to have a little bit of trust. Right. Yeah. Like, like believing that there's something else, whether, whether there's, um, it's kind of the path is already laid out and I'm just here to, to travel it or, um, like a belief in that, or like you said, more of a religious or spiritual, if there's, if there's a component of, you know, the path I choose is the right path, mm. then it allows you to trust some of your decisions. It allows you to trust yourself a little bit more on, on some of the things that you're doing in order to to move your business forward. Yeah. And, and yeah. um I do I, I I do want to uh go back to your comment about uh the mentors uh yeah. the, kind of that mentor confidant piece. Like how did you identify those people early on? Well it was it was it's interesting. You know, uh before I started my career, um I didn't want to be an engineer, which was sort of a laid out path by my dad's like you can be an engineer and you have all this. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, I can't do math, physics and whatever else you're asking me to do properly. Yeah. And, and early on, there wasn't systems in place to say, hey, there's alternative education for people who are creative or more interested in something else. It was straight up like, you know, and it was yeah. kind of like education. I hated it, you know, and I mean, I've flourished since. Uh, doing my master's degree, which was a totally different experience, but it was it was a different time as well. So, I think um, I used to seek out people who were h- highly successful, like in within my grasp, like in our community in Vancouver. Sure. And I would ask them, you know, can I come and visit you for some tea, or can I take you out for coffee? And you know, and s- there's some serious people in the city that didn't get back to me, and some people did, and the ones that did. Uh, one hired me once, one gave me one of my biggest contracts. And, you know, ever, I, thereafter when they figured out what I do. Yep. But, but what I, was happening was when I'd actually go meet them, they would I would ask them all these questions. And this is before really I was doing that online media stuff. This is like just me just hustling, just trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life. And they would, they would tell me about all their work and all their stuff that they did. And I was like, oh, that's great. And then I, at the end of the conversation, I look at them and I go, can I have a job? <laughs> and they're like, uh, I'm not hiring. I just thought you were coming in to meet with me right. to get some advice on life. And my fear, my, like that, that fearful me, that anxiety me that thought I needed to have something in hand was like getting desperate. And it hurt that I was desperate. You know, I, I was going up to people asking for jobs about things that I would probably never really know how to do or learn how to do or be interested in. But I was trying to look at my security because my mom and dad said the reason, I think the underlying reason for it all so I needed security. Yeah. Like we all somewhat need security, right? But I um 
I was just trying to secure myself with something that would give me security, maybe even temporarily, because I might not even like the jobs they were going to give me. But nobody hired me. Nobody hired me. But they walk. But I walked away with all this information. And then one day I met somebody and he said to me, why don't you just do this for a living? Keep asking people questions. And I took that to the like, like supernova, you know, I've, I've, I've gone far with that. I mean, I was in that realm anyways, you know, doing some uh, like doing media interviews and all that kind of stuff. But to think that I could create a company that just um, is based on my curiosity and some of the others that work for us, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Like that. And, and it's, it's trusting that that path can yeah. lead you to something that you love and that, and that is people, those mentors and lead you to the people that you need in order to make that, to make that happen. Truly Absolutely. amazing. Um, okay. Let's, let's differentiate between, uh, before we get into those stories and kind of okay. what you're doing, um, I want to differentiate between that, that kind of business enterprise, I, I, Sherrod and the and the creativity or creative Sherrod. Yeah. Like what yeah. when when you started to consider when your wife said, Why don't you just do this for a living mm-hmm. when you get laid off? What what were those two like you you already identified that the business side you had a lot of learning to do? You went and did some courses at YMCA, but can you really differentiate kind of that creativity and that enterprise piece as you traveled that yeah. path? So like I mean it's all about behavior, right? So like I, I am um, somebody that likes, uh, likes entertaining, for instance. I really love entertaining people. I love talking to people and I like them liking me, talking to them about something great about them. <laughs> right. And that is a big part of business, actually. I learned that. Is, and, and, and that's being myself. Actually, so I tell everybody, be yourself, right? Be yeah. yourself. Because, because the DNA of any business is individuality. You know, we live in this world of AI and everyone's like, well, how do I differentiate myself in AI? Well, be yourself, right? Because you can only, like, you can, from, from the core, you can only be yourself and nobody else can be you. So that's really, that's a really great point. But work on yourself through that process. Don't just present randomness, right? Like, be deliberate about what some great greatness that you're about to present to people. So I, I feel like I got that part really down as a human. Right. And, and somebody said to me, just be yourself. So I've just brought that into the business side. So there's my uh, attraction to people and attract and, and their attraction to me is that we are being really um, friendly and entertaining to each other and really like to have these conversations. That's number one. Number two is that, you know, I learned really, really quickly that, you know, closing a deal is not just like about dollars and cents, right? It's about relationship building. Um, uh, and I, to my detriment at times, I'd rather have a relationship than business at times because there's some people that I just don't know if the business is going to happen. They're so amazing. Yeah. And, I, and, and I, I'm very fortunate that I've been around some amazing people that keep introducing me to other amazing people. And I'm addicted to that. I want to keep meeting better and better and better, more interesting, more interesting people. Like I'm a story chaser. Right. Like I, and some, and people come to me, like when I tell them what I do and they're like, Oh, I've got a story for you. And I'm like, give me your five minutes cold version. Let me see how interesting it is. Yeah. And I then choose, do I want to take this on? And, um, I think again, back to that idea, closing business is, is about, is about for me, at least in my business and the work that we do is getting ready to take on a new family member, you know, somebody who depends on you. Somebody who is, you're going to be their confidant because you're, they're going to, like in my work, I listen to people's stories, their fears, their anxieties, their wins, their lows, like everything that happens to them in their life comes to me in a part of their commentary to me. And um, it's like a marriage, right? It's like a marriage. You're going to, um, and, and we're not talking about, you know, like little contracts here. We're talking about big, significant contracts. Like I work, um, I work in the realm of, of, uh, I guess a high end sort of nature, right? I'm not, right. I don't want, I don't want to be, uh, known as, um, like a nickel and dime sort of person. I want to be, yeah. I want to be highly successful and I want to do quality work that is worth a lot of money and a lot of value to people. Yeah. Um, because it's worth a lot of money and value to me. Um, and we're, and I also want people to know that I'm going to spend time with them. And if they're going to cry, I'm going to cry with them. You know, I've been in rooms where I've been doing end of life interviews 
recently. Okay. So these are some of my clients have now gotten older. You know, I do these family documentaries and they're like, Hey, Sharon, my mom's got cancer. It's got a few months to live. Or my dad is uh, hitting, hitting an old time, you know, where he's not going to have his memory. And I need you to come and document him and sit with him. And I, and I know truly at this point in my life that I'm made for that sort of work. I have the right temperament. I have the right emotional intelligence that I can walk into a room and make someone feel comfortable. And it can't be an act, right? It yeah. Can't be an act. So for yeah. people, you know, people come to me like, oh, are there a lot of people that do this type of work? I'm like, I don't know. But I hope whoever is doing this type of work has the same temperament, the same care, and same emotional intelligence as me to take care of that person that is across from me. Yeah. And that's what I've learned about my work is to really like, so it's not like, it's not business, right? This is an emotional journey that I'm going through. And it happens to be that I'm creating a business for it. So. It's well, and I think, yeah. And I think, I think that really drives home the, the kind of the, the answer to the question is the, the, the connection of the creativity and the enterprise are really interwoven. And, and yeah. you, you kind of identified that early on when you said be yourself right and and i think that's a that's a really important takeaway for anybody in life no matter what they're doing but certainly certainly in business and and that creativity that people have in in, in inherently by virtue of who they are can feed the business and can be part of what they're what they're trying to that's to right. achieve in the business right that's right I I want to uh, go back to you saying about uh, meeting more and more interesting people, and then sure. here you are getting invited to uh, or getting introduced to me by Trevor. It must be a real step back in your in your progression of yeah. of interesting yeah. people. <laughs> well, you know what? Here here's what I'll say, and, and Trevor, like uh, everybody has uh, a connection point, right? And um, yeah. I, I was very, very fortunate early on. I mean, it's also, it's, I'll, I'll just really lay it out for everybody. I, I started out in television where I used to interview celebrities or bands or people. So I was fascinated with that culture. And so if I was to build a business, like it wasn't like it was just that you can just go out and go meet, like go sure. do some work with Oprah or go, you know, work with, you know, Meryl Streep. Like it wasn't like that. But what happened was, was I put myself out there by saying, this is what I want to do. These are the categories of people I want to be around. And somehow, some way, when you say it, like, again, I believe in that manifestation. It's like, because, you know, I'm a BC kid. You know, I grew up here in Burnaby. I still live here. I, I travel the world to do what I do, but I still live here. So it's like, I'm grounded in some sense. But I also have this other side of me where I'm like, give me, you know, give me the moon, right? I want, I want, I want, I want the stars and the sky. I want it all. And uh, whatever it takes to get there. And it's also like this idea that really important people have trusted me, right? And so then when they trust you, then they're going to introduce you to other people that will want that same thing. And so, you know, again, I don't know how, how these things keep happening, but it started with, you know, and I was reminded very recently that I've got to keep, keep networking, right? I was, I was a power networker. Like I loved, and it wasn't about just meeting like, you know, the people who we look at as unattainable. It was like meeting everybody. And having time because everyone adds value. And, and again, when um, when Trevor had introduced us, first of all, I have so much love and respect for Trevor, right? So that's something, that's one layer right there. But then suddenly also being like, you know, what is the opportunity here, right? And we spoke on the phone, you and I, and we and it was a very comfortable conversation. And um, and I do get invited to a lot of different speaking opportunities and interview things that I can't say yes to all the time because of time, because yeah, it sure. may not align with my values, or I can just get a feel, is this right or wrong for me? And so... Um, you're not, after a while, you're going to, like, the gravy train of celebrities might stop, right? So you're not going to have all these great, interesting people that you look up to or watch on TV that you're going to keep meeting. But the idea that everybody has an opportunity to spark an idea inside me, that I could, there could be something there. And so <clears throat> even us speaking today, I see it as an opportunity for people to see who I am as a timestamp in July of 2024, right? Yeah. And uh, that will change, right? I do these interviews with people like two years ago and who they are today is, is going to be so dramatically different only because of time, 
and has and all and, and add layers onto time, which is like circumstance of um of you know of health circumstance of surroundings circumstance of the world economy of uh, of the nature of, of of their work or whatever it may be things are the sh- quickly shift and so this is a time stamp for me and i just thought let's let's do let's do that but also like you know i don't want to um i don't want to ever discount somebody because they may not be a celebrity or they might not be famous or they might not have a net worth is that what is the feeling that I get from them? You know, like you get, you get to choose uh, who you want to be around. And I think, uh, you know, this is a great opportunity to talk about myself in a really great way. I think, I think what you're doing, and it also reminds me of why I'm doing what I'm doing in the first place as well. Talk about the business side of things. Yeah. 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 No. And I, and, and I appreciate that. I I think, um, you know, the, the, the idea of storytelling has has really evolved i uh, you yeah. know like there's there's some uh, obviously some cultures that uh, have relied on on storytelling for millennia just to yeah. just to kind of co- a continuity of their culture um but obviously with technology you're you kind of jumping in early around uh the the production side and and yeah. uh, telling those stories um and i think the beautiful part is that the people do evolve and and it changes yeah. their stories and and it gives new new stories to to share and and uh, i'm really enjoying this piece just being able to talk to people about the about the business side of of uh, their story and their journey um but i want to i want to expand now into like you have talked to some really profound uh, people around the world um I don't know what the connection is here to kind of the, the idea of business and the business journey, but um, obviously some of the stories that you've heard that, that have been shared with you uh, that you've seen uh, and you've talked to some, some business people, including uh, Jimmy Patterson right here in, from, from Vancouver billionaire. Um, what are, what are some of those, uh, you know commonalities that you would that you, that you would see across kind of spectrums of the arts versus business versus yeah. spiritual leaders um that uh, you know that that you can kind of take away to say like that's that's an important virtue for people yeah i think <clears throat> the people that i meet and the people i connect with um they're constantly doing something. It's not like they're retiring or, you know, they're, they're, they're constantly doing something. So they have purpose. That's the commonality with a lot of them. They all have purpose. They all, they all feel that they're the things and they're constantly learning, right? So they're constantly learning and they're ready to share as well. And so their purpose is always, that could be ever changing based on where they are in life or their, their health or whatever that may be. But they they continue to have purpose, and that 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 really is a driving force for a lot of people. I I yeah I've I've had the I've had moments to speak with people that um that you know like not very many people get to talk to or hang out with. So it's kind of like a big joy for me, and feeling very lucky to do that, feeling very a lot of gratitude. But also, I'm like, this is my moment to like get what I need out of this, and a lot of it is is just asking my own questions. Like like I sometimes will be hired by organizations to come in and interview somebody and they have a purpose uh for the interview so they'll say hey shard can you um can you make sure you get this this and this and we edit a piece and it goes onto our website or it goes onto our channel or whatever it may be and i'm hired and brought in and because i'm i'm able to have comfortable conversations and and then i understand how to talk to people at that level because you have to be on right you have to be on and so uh that's one facet but then the second facet is is like you know um are they interested to talk to you, right? Are they, are they, do they really want to be there? And so their knowledge is really like this place where you're just, give me, give me something that nobody's heard, right? Give me something that nobody has heard. So I'm constantly, I'm, I'm constantly feeling very, very lucky to be in the rooms with these people, but there's a reason that I'm there. Like they, they've found a reason to have me there and they've made time for me to be there. So then I, then I then then I just put myself in this place where like, I'm, I'm not going to like feel less than them (laughs) because there's a lot of times where you're sitting in a room and you're like with, you know, you're with like Meryl Streep, right? And you don't, you have very limited time to be with somebody like Meryl Streep. And all you're thinking in for the first 10 minutes is like, wow, nobody else has ever been with Meryl Streep that I know. (laughs) Nobody's interviewed her for an hour that I know. Like, you know, I was thinking all those things like, oh my God, like, am I going to like fall flat? Or am I like, 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 am I faking this? 
how did I get to the, into this room? And then Imposter there's this moment syndrome. where you're like, I have to act as if I've got to do the job. Yeah. I have to do the work. And so that is what it all boils down to. Yeah. Why am I here? Oh, I'm here to do work. This is my job. It is fascinating uh, to be around such incredible people, but like also then again is you have to do the work. And when you, when you, when you show up and you, and you have, you're ready for that work, then that person sitting across you is like, that was great. Let's right. do that. Again. Or here to meet my friend. Right. And I've been very lucky to be in the right rooms with the right people who have not only given me their energy, their words, their emotion, but they said, here, call my friend up. They need the same thing and they want to deal with you. And and you you the word you used earlier was trust in those yeah. circumstances, right? Like you build you build that trust not just by the virtue of somebody trusting you, but the fact that you did a good job, the fact that they can see yeah. that you're emotionally intelligent and you're that you're invested and that you're an active yeah. listener and all of those types of things uh, and prepared. Um, yeah. They they then Absolutely. trust you enough to be able to refer you on to to somebody else. And, and um, I'll, I'll say one more thing: yeah, is these are people you have to be able to take care of people that don't need taken care of. Does that make sense? Yep. There are people that don't need anything from you actually, yep. but then suddenly they're like, ah, I do need something from you. And then that is like where you're like, whoa, you have to act as if you have to be ready to go because now this is somebody who could pick anybody in the world. Okay. Anybody in the world to do this work. Well, for some reason, for some reason I've been chosen. And so, you know what you don't like, there's like, no time for ego at that time. It's time to yeah. do the work. So you got to do the work no matter what. Otherwise, you're never going to have these opportunities again. Yeah. 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 Um, I want to go back to two things that you said, because uh, one of them, I I don't know if you could see the smile on my face, but I like it was so amazing that you said it. Um, when I asked about kind of that commonality with the people that you that you've talked to. Um, you identifying that they've got purpose and yeah. i i don't know i i can't remember what episode this is going to be when it gets published but um through many of the previous episodes uh in, in talking with people in business uh on this podcast so many times it's come up uh the the kind of the the phrase purpose before profit yeah. and so connecting yeah. connecting kind of what you're yeah. seeing uh from these people you know uh, and you haven't dropped the name yet but but the dalai lama you've 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 interviewed Document, like yeah, doc- documented him yeah for three days documented yeah. yeah so so like having those touch points yeah. and being able to see those the, that commonality and it still comes back to something that we're talking about on the podcast with different um the the people that i've had the the good fortune to interview sure. it's 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 and and connecting it back to that business conversation, right? Uh, yeah. Having having well, that purpose and making it the driving force of why you do what you do. I think so. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put this and it's and I you know maybe the way I understand it is a lot easier, but I'll have to maybe explain it the way I understand it. So when you work for a company, before you even get paid, you're given a job and a task, and you start doing that job and that task, and you and some people will attach themselves to companies because. They have a great product, they have a great service, or sometimes they have a great mission statement, right? And they'll join that company and they'll start working and then they'll get their first paycheck. They don't get their first paycheck and then they start right. working. And so for me, I have to do the work. Uh, I have to do everything um, that is based on my own purpose before I get paid or for, before even anyone even notices me. So we are all purpose-driven people. <laughs> You know, some people, if some, there are, listen, there's some jobs out there that just make you money. And I, I know that I respect that. I understand there's people, certain people sure. just going after that. Um, and they're willing to do the work, whatever that might be. Yep. But in the new age of work or this new age of everything, whether it's like technology, whether it's like ages, the age of a certain generation, uh, the opportunities that are given through, um, uh, through through new jobs that are just created through tech, like consulting or technology, whatever it may be, is that there lies passion before the profit because you have to be and do and act as if before you get paid to do it anyway. So I think that like I think we're all kind of passionate, but does the passion stay? You know, passion is has got to be real, right? And so for us, you know, in our in our business, human biography business, we are so passionate about what we do that sometimes we flip the bill. And the person doesn't pay. Okay. 
and so, I mean, a great example of that is um, I was at a party uh, in Las Vegas. I was invited to this cool party. I was, I was speaking at a conference and there's a gentleman, I'll make it really fast, walking through the crowd. He's seven foot two. And right away, my wife's like, look at that guy, seven foot two. And I was like, that's big church. And she's like, what do you mean? What is that? What is that? What, what does big church mean? <laughs> I go, that's his nickname. He's Floyd Mayweather's bodyguard. And I'm going to walk up to him and say hi. And obviously I follow everybody on the internet that's so obscure that me, my wife's just like, what are you talking about? So I walked up to him. And I go, are you big church? He's like, yep. Yeah. And the next day I go, can I document you? And I went back to Vegas about three months later and I interviewed him and his family. And I just, I don't know. I saw this, all this footage and I've had these interview stuff and, and there'll be an ongoing thing that I do. But he said yes to, because he looked me up and he was very interested in, you know, it was, it was really, it was really, really interesting because yeah. I, I realized that um, my enthusiasm for a person, for a human, like when you see somebody you love, right? You're like, oh my God, it's so good to meet you. I have a follow-up to that now. I have the follow-up. I was like, can I interview you? Yeah. Can, I, can I document you? Here's my repertoire of work. And then they're like, oh, okay, this guy's serious. Uh, then they consider it. <laughs> And when they consider it, your dreams are coming true and maybe their dreams are coming true uh, on, from two different perspectives, you know? Sure. Them sure. getting to be able to have somebody like me document them and me being like, oh, I get to play again in the world that I love, right? So it's a very interesting place to be. Um, but passion has got to be there. Passion has got to be there. Whether you're an employee or whether you're an employer or whether you're an entrepreneur. Because in today's day and age, there's so much interesting opportunity that you don't actually have to do what you don't love. Well, and I mean, uh, like my, the, the perfect example of that is this podcast. If I, if I, if I right. wasn't passionate, if I wasn't passionate about uh, just kind of, and, and quite honestly, just my own personal interest and in, in having fun sure. with it, but, but chatting with people and talking and sharing these stories and, and uh, hopefully impacting a few people that might, that might listen, but yeah. You're not starting something like this because there's a huge paycheck or a pot of gold right away when you get started. It's it's you you definitely have to have some other some other driving force behind it. Um, the other the only other thing I want to unpack from what you said earlier about uh, kind of the the uh, the path or the commonality of the folks that you've had the good fortune of of connecting with is this idea that they're all busy, that they all have things going yeah. on. Um, what, what can you expand on that a little bit? Like, what does that, what, what does that look like? Like they just, they're, they're constantly doing new things or they, the things that they're doing, keep them busy or. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think what it is is that they're doing things that are within their purpose. Right. Um, and their passion. And so it's, it's like, for me, like, um, I learned from all these people, right? So like, you know, when yeah, people like, I, I mean, course. like, that's a good, I don't think I'll, I'll stop what I'm doing. And these are people who are not stopping what they're doing. Yeah. They're like, uh, okay. Because if you could imagine me, this kid from Burnaby, British Columbia, getting all these opportunities, I can't imagine the opportunities they're getting all day long. Yeah. And they're not saying no to them. And they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're greater levels of things that they're, they're, they're being offered that we would never even know about. Right. And so, I think, I think the idea is, is that, you know, do you want to have FOMO or do you want to be in it? Right? Like yeah. I have fear of missing out. I do. I, I have, I have fear of missing out. I was like, why didn't I think of that? Or why didn't I go do that? And now these people are being offered that all day long. Like it's, it's, it's a, it's a human nature thing to be included, to feel inclusive, to, to be a part of, we all want to be a part of something. Right. And these are people that are getting all the offers. Well, if I can get it, if I can start doing that, I, I'll be right in there. And I think a lot of people would be. Yeah. So, yeah, like not, not passing up opportunities, but also not dismissing the ideas that you have to expand on, on delivering on your purpose and, and expanding. You know, yeah. So it's like something else. Uh, I can't take on all the projects that I, right. that come to me because they don't fulfill my purpose actually as well. Like I will not, there's, there's, I'll give you a really good example there's um there's people out there that make content that hurt people's reputations and personalities it's horrible it's it's like that gotcha entertainment or it's misinformation right. 
Um, I'm in the business of happy. We make people look good through content that is interview. We're all about that. I will never disparage anybody. If that happens on my set, it's done. We're, we're gone, right? So there's only certain types of content that we'll make. So it's it's it falls into that category of like, you know, do good work and good people will be around you, you know? Yeah. And, and you want to also have purpose through that good work, you know? I, I hope that makes sense. I mean... No, no, it does. I, I, I mean, even just, just knowing where the lines are within what you, what you want to deliver in your business, it does define some of those, uh, some of those opportunities to, to expand what you're doing and different paths to go down. Category where people understand what you do. Like when I started off, people didn't know what I, they're like, what do you mean you document people or you interview people? I'm like, I make video content, document people's families, uh, do interviews and we specialize in that. And then they're like, can we see some examples? And I see some examples. Like I remember early in my career, um, I met with like, uh, I met Chip Wilson, you know, founder of Lululemon. Uh, yeah. And it was before I really even started my business. It's 2008. And uh, I was thinking about starting a business based on starting this content. And um, we developed a relationship, you know, and a relationship was like, uh, kind of like this guy who's giving me great advice, who was super smart, and passionate, created, like, you know, revolutionized the world in, in, in this huge, um, in a huge way. And you're like, can I emulate that? Right. It's a guy from the same city. I've walked in the same streets, this guy. How can I do that? I was like, well, only way you can learn is if you get close to that person and go meet with them. And so I would reach out, I reach out to Chip and I said, Hey, can I meet with you? He's like, no, I'm kind of busy, but (laughs) keep in touch. And then 2014, 10 years ago this year, uh, him and I did a Ted talk where I interviewed him on stage at Ted at TEDx in Vancouver at the Queen Elizabeth theater. And again, there's that symbiosis. This is it's this trust culture of like somebody being interested in somebody who's fantastic. And I felt so honored that he would say yes to that. So then, and then a few years later, I interviewed him for his uh, to create his book, Little Black Stretchy Pants. And I I did all the interviews for that book. And it was like, again, he contacted me, and I was like, when you get a yeah. call from somebody like that, you're like, wow, what have I done right in my world? Yeah. And it was, it's all about trust and relationship. And it's also about caring about the other person. Like before I, before I think about business, I think about like, how much do I love and admire this person? And not everyone will use the word love in their business at all, ever. But I will only do business with, I love, with people I love and I admire. And if, if that doesn't fall into the ethos of, of who's in front of me, then it doesn't work, right? Yeah. And, um, and it's hard to hard to be working in an emotional business, right? Because it's not, business is not supposed to be emotional, but I have, I've tried to walk that line and I am in a very emotional business. I cry with people who are at the end of their life. I celebrate with people, as I mentioned, who are getting the biggest wins in their life. So it's always, always something interesting. It's always something interesting that's happening. Yeah. Yeah. And you would have, I mean, obviously doing what you do, you have a very different connection to the people that like it, it's almost it almost feels crass to say that you're doing business with right like like as much as this is a business podcast it's it's, uh, it's like uh, like well, there's a business component to it but i mean knows, there's everybody knows everybody knows after a while what your business is right right sure so so that's that's once that's out of the way then sure. I mean, essentially like even a painter is getting paid for his painting when he right when he, when he's commissioned for it that is a business so the term business is happening but you know i um the i I think that i think of that as an administrative piece of the business the invoicing the exchange yeah yeah yeah. factual final like uh, you know agreements and you know the call to action that needs to happen or the deliverables all that stuff but when they ask you to be creative in front of a room in front of an audience um in front of a camera then that is the actual work that is happening. That is your mastery. Okay. So I call it mastery because I have interviewed so many people and had so many interesting dialogues with such fascinating minds that I've come to a mastery of my work. Right. And so I will only do business with master people who've gone through mastery, real mastery, like not like yeah. we're really great. Here's my yellow pages, you know, um, rating. No, I want to, I can tell you, I want to work with the best in the world. And you know what? Because I want to work with the best in the world, I then want to be categorized as the best in the world for what I do. And I believe that I'm getting there. I don't think I'm there yet. I mean, there's probably a lot of fascinating people that are ahead of me in this, but I want to be there one day. 
and I'm on that path. And I only want people like that around me teaching me um, rather than distracting me with talking about, oh, you know, let's talk about business. I don't want to talk about business and, and, and not, not, to, not to shun for what we're talking about here, but really to say, tell me about you and your experience that, that led to this flourishing thing that we call a business. You know, I'm fascinated by that. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Do you, do you, yeah. No, no, it does. Yeah. Does, does the admin side ever take away from the, because it is, because there is so much emotion and, mm-hmm. and it does. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Like yeah. I, I'll do this. People like directly dealing with me. So whether it comes to um, having the real conversation about what goes on, because some of the people that I'm dealing with don't want to deal with an administrative person. Right. They're not, you don't want to, put like you know like you don't, you don't want to put a junior person in front of a, a master yeah. himself. now like t- now talk to my accounts darth receivable darth vader. <laughs> you know you don't want to put yeah. you know like a little ewok in front of darth vader because you're <laughs> like this guy is going to chew him up yeah. you want a loving human like myself in front of that person because i'm there to not only respect what is needed but i want them to know that you only have to look to one person to have everything complete the way that you need it. And everybody else that is involved in this, I will deal with. And when yeah. you have that, if you, when you have that ideal, then everyone's like, you're the guy. You're the guy yeah. I want to deal with. You're the only person yeah. I want. To deal with. And yeah. I, I'm fortunate enough. And also, like, you know, there are some, and yeah, there's some administrative things that happen between my team and their team that's happening. Sure. But once you get all those formalities out of the way, you know that that you want to be the main touch point for those types of situations, at least in my business now, because the type of people, people I'm dealing with, I, it's a pleasure to deal with those people. Right. And yes, administrative stuff does get a little bit daunting. It's not like my, it's not my favorite thing, but it's also, listen, everyone enjoys the idea of getting paid for what they do best. Yeah. And I love, love, love ensuring that I'm taking care of myself and my family based on my, uh, brainchild of an operation which is my business human biography yeah yeah i think i think people in any business could relate to this idea that a client sometimes wants only the attention of a certain individual in that business sometimes the owner and you know the owner only has so much time to to kind of pass around and and uh yeah i can i i think people could could relate no matter what the business is yeah absolutely absolutely Um, Sure. This has been really, really awesome. I feel like, I feel like we only, uh, we only scratched the surface. I, I, I think, uh, you know, people will, will be fascinated to see, uh, to go and look you up and, and look at actually some of the stuff that you've been doing. Would, That'd be great. Uh, yeah. I yeah. The conversation. I appreciate the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. And, and to, to get a sense of, you know, from such a creative and a, 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 a business that is so emotionally connected to, to your, um, to your partners and your clients and the people yeah. you work with um, to, to be able to talk more about the business side. And I appreciate you taking the time to do that with us. So it's my yeah. absolute pleasure. And thank you for the opportunity. It, 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 like it, all of this, all like, you know, all that I look at when I, when I have these conversations is uh, am I still relevant? Yeah. You know, you want to always make sure that you're current, you're relevant and that you're still interested in doing what you're doing. And so far, yeah. but, we we're still moving and we're still yeah. rocking. We're still enjoying some beautiful, beautiful opportunities. And um, all I say is if, if there's anyone out there that believes that uh, they have a story to tell, you, you can always contact me. Yeah. And, you know, uh, and it's, it's one thing, it's one thing for us to like, you know, just look at it ourselves for our own purposes, but like, you know, sometimes the world needs to be inspired. And that is why I do what I do uh, to find the newest, the newest, like, you know, stories that are all, um, interesting and that are all like you know out there that we never heard of and so yeah trying to access that yeah really really amazing yeah, yeah. thanks well thank thanks so much for sharing yeah great super great having you here thank you so much